Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. Each Sunday I post a video and this could either be a real-time demo, it could be a tutorial, it could be a plein air adventure or sometimes a combination of all three. I paint quite a wide range of subjects including animals, landscapes and portraits and I use a reasonably wide range of media as well including conventional acrylic, interactive acrylic, watercolour, ink tents, pencil, biro, alcohol markers, sharpie markers, and sometimes I just combine all of these. So the paintings today are all inspired by a trip to Widmouth Bay in Cornwall, which is a beautiful beach on the north shore of Cornwall. Uh, it's about an hour and a half roughly from where I live. And uh, I started out by doing two plein air paintings in watercolour. So I used this Winsor & Newton watercolour paper, which I haven't used before. It's a little bit of an, an unusual size. It's 16 inches by 20, which is slightly smaller than A2, which is the normal size that I use. So I set up my little field easel on the sand and uh, inspired by a group of people who'd set up a little tent on the sand nearby. Uh, I got painting and uh, started out with a pretty loose treatment in terms of washes for the sky, the distant cliffs, the sea, and you know managed to get some really lovely colour mixing going on for some of the colours of the sea. Uh, then I worked on the people and in terms of my treatment of the people I basically for the most part built up silhouettes certainly for these two figures here. And then somewhere in between the silhouette approach and some line work approach for the others. In particular, I'm pretty happy with the way this guy in the tent came out. I added some smaller figures off in the distance to create a sense of depth. And then I added, started to add in some of the kind of lines of rocks which go into the shallows from the beach here. And I didn't really enjoy the treatment then. I didn't want to get into overworking. So this part of the painting I feel works pretty well. I like this. I like this. This is not so great. So I need to kind of uh, crop the painting appropriately in order to make the finished image work. And I'll show you that at the end of the video. Now, the second plein air study I did, I took a rather different approach. So in this case, it's the same group of people, but it's later in the day. I'd been in the water a little bit. I managed to catch a few waves um, and uh, I thought, well, I'll go a little more defined this time. So I used my ballpoint pen to just be a little bit more careful, particularly with drawing out this figure. Still fairly simple, but, you know, keep keeping it uh, fairly precise. Same for this one. And then I kind of just did three out of the group, arranged just some of the things which were lying around, um, arranged them around the figures to give a little bit of context. Again, I kept the background very loose. And I'm particularly happy with the way these distant cliffs have worked out in that they're barely defined. And if you look at this kind of line here, you know, it's sort of the horizon between the sky and the sea. Well, there isn't really one, but I just really like the overall effect. And because the figures are worked up to a higher level of finish, I feel this as a whole still reads as a beach with cliffs. Um, I like this bit here as well, where I've just kind of loosely put the the beach in or some indication of the beach. I did use a little bit of ballpoint pen here to kind of define a little wave rolling in. And then this little dog wasn't actually with the group. He was with um, another family who turned up a bit later. And I was Look at this little dog. still painting. And I thought, well, I'll just pop him in. He wasn't actually in that pose, but I just kind of, kind of got inspired by seeing him run back and forth along the sand. So two watercolour studies. Oh, the other thing uh, before I forget is I put a little house up on the cliff here again, just to add a little sense of distance to the painting, a little bit of depth. So two paintings, both of which I'm happy with, um, slightly different styles. I want to see if I can take it another step further and just kind of loosen up a little more, be less defined, but still get something effective. So I'll go into the real time demo now. This week's inspiration comes from Widmouth Bay, which is on the north coast of Cornwall. 
and uh, I'm just using a little Dalarani uh, watercolor set here. This is an aquarelle set. So I've been using this when I go out painting uh, outdoors a little bit recently, and I've really been enjoying using it. It's got a nice, nice range of colors. It's really compact and light. So I'm just picking up a pale blue and having wetted my watercolor paper with the spray bottle, as you just saw, I'm just going to take my synthetic mop brush and uh, lay in a gentle wash with, you know, fairly steady horizontal brush strokes of this pale blue. Now you can see I've got a bit of a, a run of colour going down the left there. I'm not too worried about that for the moment because things are still nice and wet. And um, furthermore, the sea is going to be there on the left hand side of the painting. So um, hopefully I'm going to be able to cover that up in a little bit. Now, in terms of the distant cliffs, I want to sort of introduce uh, a little bit of the headland in there. So we'll kind of just indicate that out, that outline with a little wiggle of the brush. Um, and I'm going to come back in with a paper towel in a moment to lift off some of that bead of colour. In fact, I think I'll actually do that right now. So if this is going to be my horizon line. There's a little bit of the cliff, comes back here, and then it kind of picks up a little bit, and it's a little bit higher as we go over to the right. I don't have to be overly precise at this stage, but um, you know, it's just about getting the rough shapes in place, the big shapes. All right, well, now I can move on to putting in a preliminary wash for the water. So. I'm going to take some of that same blue and mix it in with a slightly darker blue and perhaps a little bit of this kind of ocean blue. And I want to keep the painting fairly, fairly damp at this stage. And what we'll do is we will bring in some of that slightly deeper blue in there. Let's pick up some more of that darker blue. And a sweeping brush stroke that way to begin to indicate the kind of zigzagginess of the, of the tide lapping in on the beach. Now, um, there are quite an amazing variety of colours in the water down in Cornwall, and these change almost minute by minute with the variation in cloud cover and the water churning up different things. So I've just added a, quite a lot of green to pale green to my wash. I'm going to put that in there and let that do its own thing. And then I'm actually going to take some orange haven't washed my brush out, but um, I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there. And then I'm just going to wash my brush out this time, though. And we'll grab a bit of purple or magenta, I guess. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap between that blue wash and some of the other stuff and just kind of lay that in there. Make things a little stronger and move the brush pretty quick coming in that way. And then I'm just going to let all of that kind of merge and mix and run down the paper. Whoops. And while it's doing that, I'm just going to spray a paper towel with a bit of water. And if I can, it's not really a big problem if it, if it doesn't lift off, but um, I'm going to lift off what I can of that wash 
from the silhouette of the figure on the left, which I forgot to mention actually, I just did a few very simple preliminary biro lines. So I've barely indicated these two figures, but it's just to kind of get them placed on the paper uh, in a reasonably clear way so that I can see my way forward. But that's they're the only uh, sort of initial drawing lines I've done. So we're getting some nice effects going on here and I'm going to let that dry now. It's a few minutes later now and the painting's not completely dry but it's on its way. You can see I've got a cauliflower forming here and a little bead of colour and there are some other cauliflowers and some really nice kind of mixing and of colour and runs of colour. I'm going to leave all of that as it is and you know my hope is that the background's going to be a little kind of semi-abstract but also you know I may incorporate some of those uh, effects into uh, into the final painting, you know, in a representational way, if I can. Now, what I'm doing at the moment, uh, apparently there was a little bit of pink left on this brush, but I uh, obviously didn't wash it out uh, properly before, but either that or my water is more coloured than I realised. But what I'm doing is just laying in uh, an area of wet paper with, with what was meant to be clean water. And I'm doing that so that I can put on a soft wash. I'm using a slightly smaller brush um, on the rest of the painting but I don't want to spray what I've done already with the water bottle so just wetting the rest of the paper here uh, and that will I hope help control the wash a little bit as well if you've got different levels of wetness on your paper that kind of controls where the wash will naturally uh, go. So um, I've cleaned my palette, cleaned the lid of the little kit and I'm just going to pick up uh, a little bit of yellow here and I'm not looking to copy the landscape exactly um, but I will just be inspired by it so we'll put a little bit of yellow in there and then I'm going to pick up a mid green and mix that in with what yellow is left on the palette And we'll lay that in and then we'll mix that in with a little bit of blue as well, a bit of ultramarine blue into the green. And then having done that, I'm going to pick up either burnt umber or raw, I think it's probably raw umber, um, and mix that in as well. And, and then we'll put a little bit of red into that mixture. Just change the way we apply that a little bit. So we've got kind of distant cliffs here, horizontal brush strokes and slightly closer cliffs with swift diagonal brush strokes there. And now having done that, now I've, I can begin to lay in some of the sand. So I've got this colour here, which looks like yellow ochre. It's always a little bit difficult, I find, to judge the colours just by uh, looking at the, the pans. Um, and uh, my memory isn't good enough to memorize all of those colors. So nevertheless, we'll, we'll start with that as a bit of a sand color. And we'll sweep that in in gentle diagonal downward strokes so that it kind of suggests the beach is sloping down a little bit. And then as we come a little bit closer, I'm going to take some of this, what is possibly burnt sienna, and mix that in with the yellow ochre. Bit of a stronger wash. Just let those two combine where they meet. Being careful to leave a little bit of a white gap between the washes I put down for the water and the wash I'm applying now. And then a little bit of artistic license. I'm adding a little bit of just red to that. 
as I come down into the foreground. And why not? Let's add a bit of the magenta or the purple, whatever it is. And again, I'm going to let that dry for a little bit so all the colours combine in their own way. But once again, while that's happening, I will lift off what I can with a paper towel from the silhouette of the figure on the right. It's a few minutes later again, and so the right hand washes that I put in are either dry or pretty close to dry. So now I'm going to begin to work on the figures. Now, the first thing I'm going to tackle is the chap's jacket, and that's kind of a yellow ochre in colour. And that's probably, with the exception of his jeans, that's probably the closest to a primary colour that I've got, and it's also a pale colour. So I'm going to pick what looks to be lemon yellow. It doesn't matter too much, it's, but this is going to be my highlight colour for the jacket. So as long as it's a, a pretty pure, bright yellow, it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do again is just I'm going to squint at my reference. And I'm, the paint's a little bit thicker than what I've been putting on before, but I'm just looking at the big shapes. So I'm not getting overly concerned with folds in the fabric or you know where his hand is and that kind of stuff. But I just want to put in the large shapes of this jacket in a fairly loose way. So that's probably all I need to do for that at the moment. Now, the reason I chose the yellow first is the woman is wearing green trousers. So I can now add a bit of blue to that situation. Let's go for this mid blue here. Um, and that gives me a green. But I think I'm actually going to add this other green here and a bit of this one. And really, I'm just sort of playing until I get what I think is going to be a pretty good highlight colour. I think that should be OK. So again, fairly loose treatment, big shapes. I need to be careful to leave a little bit of a gap between her legs so that it looks like she is walking along. And I didn't really leave quite the gap I intended to. I have left the gap, but it's not quite the one I intended. But no, well, we should be able to make that work OK. And that's probably all I can do in terms of yellows and greens, in terms of highlight colours for the moment. So now I'm going to head for the blues. And I think I'm just going to get some uh, ultramarine blue and mix that in with what's left on my brush, because it doesn't have to be a completely pure blue. We'll pick up some of that light blue we used for the sky as well. And that's probably that's probably going to be good enough for the jeans, I think. So again, looking at the big shapes. So his shirt is making a bit of an angle. And then I'm basically just blocking in the legs. And while um, I'm going to come back to, to all of these things, but while that's wet, or at least damp, I'm going to put a lot more ultramarine blue into the mixture, grab a little bit of that magenta, and a little bit of the umber that I used before to give me a darker colour. And we can begin to put some shadow in on the jeans. And if I mix that in with the green, I can probably do a similar thing for the ladies' trousers as well. So that worked reasonably well. So let's try and go back towards the yellow ochre without cleaning the brush. Just grab some of that yellow ochre and mix that in with what I've got. Um, and that's probably going to be OK for a shadow colour. So let's again keep the shapes fairly big, you know, where I can. And 
and that's probably all I need to do there. So now I can start to work on the lady's top and then I'll move on to the, uh, the hands and faces. So for the shadows on her top, I'm going to grab a little bit of that magenta again, but I'm going to add a lot more of the pale blue, a bit more of the magenta, and that's probably getting somewhere close. So her uh, cap, I guess it is, is casting quite a shadow down onto the top part of her chest. And then we've got some kind of wiggly shadows on that right hand sleeve. And a little bit here. I'm going to touch there as well. Um, she's carrying some shoes. I don't know whether I'm actually going to bother to include that, but this same colour I think I can probably use for her hat. Or at least part of it. So I'll just put a loose indication in of that. Um, and then let's grab some uh, orange and mix that in. And I'm starting to regret that because I was thinking what I should do is a highlight colour for the skin, but I'll, I'll use this as, a, as the beginnings of a shadow colour or a mid-tone. So uh, most of her face is in shadow actually, so that's quite convenient. Her right arm, there's a line of shadow down there. And there's a bit of shadow there where her sleeve stops. And that's more or less it. His hand is here. There's a bit of shadow there. Right side of his face is in shadow. In fact, most of his face is in shadow as well, but there is a bit of a highlight. Uh, and then there's a hand around about here. And I'm not going to include his foot for the moment. And so the next thing I'm doing is I've taken some of the raw umber, some burnt umber, some of the ultramarine blue, and I've mixed those together to give me a fairly dark colour. And that can be used for uh, the beginnings of a bag here and the beginnings of, you know, the, the shoulder strap. And then similarly for him, there's a strap going over the shoulder there, which comes down here. And then he's got uh, some kind of bag, bag or backpack. And I'll leave a little gap there for a highlight, which we'll put in in just a moment. Now, this same colour, I'm actually going to overlay onto the jeans and see how that works for darkening some of the, some of the shadows there. And we can even take that across to the ladies' trousers as well. But whoops, as I'm doing this, I'm sort of looking at some of what I've got already and thinking, well, I might want to keep that bit because I quite like the way the watercolour has done its own thing. Now, his hair, I can probably use this colour at the beginnings of his hair. And maybe even add a little more shadow. No, I don't think I'm going to, not with this colour anyway, so we'll leave that for the moment. So I've given a reasonably even treatment to the whole painting now, but the next thing I want to do is just add uh, a couple of figures back here to begin to add a little bit of depth. So I've switched to a, a small round brush and um, I'm just mixing into that brown with a little bit of the green that I used before. And, you know, so I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail at all, but we can just begin to place a little silhouette here. Somebody off in the distance. Um, and then I'll just mix more into that green to change the colour of the silhouette a little bit. 
and perhaps they're with a, a young child. So we've started to, just the simple addition of that, those little silhouettes, now start to indicate that, you know, okay, we're going off into the distance compared to these figures. And I may leave it at that, or I may add some others in a bit, but for now that will, that will do. All right, so what I'm going to do next is, sticking with my small round brush, I'm going to grab some uh, just pure ultramarine blue. And I'm going to use this blue to kind of deepen some of the shadows on the two foreground figures and also add just a little bit of line work here and there where I feel the need to define areas a little more than they currently are. So it's a reasonably you know, thick mix of, of watercolour, but still nice and fluid. So this chap's hairline, it's got just the tiniest amount of a V to it, which I'm going to enhance a little bit. And then um, he's got some sunglasses on. So uh, let's make sure we get those at roughly the right angle. Just give me a second. There we go. So that's the top of the sunglasses coming in. Okay, and then we'll put the arm, the sunglasses in there. I'm probably going to leave the other arm missing. That that's, should be fine. Then I can look around and see, well, where else can I put some really dark shadows and get away with it? So I'll probably put a little line in here under the collar of his jacket. And, uh, you know, I haven't defined the hand at all. And I may not, so I'm just going to leave that with a little mark there for the moment. Put another little line in for the jacket there. And then this strap for the bag, that could be a little better defined in terms of line. And also, you know, I can live with that being darker as well. And then we can, can continue that strap a bit more in a bit more of a refined way down there. And then darken some of the shadows on the bag and make this thing look a little more bag-like without, you know, I don't want to go into too much detail, at least not yet. But already, hopefully, that's starting to bring him a little more into focus. And then under the bottom of his shirt, I think I can live with a little darker line there. And again, on his jeans, I can put in a couple of very dark lines to indicate the folds of the fabric. And then if we move over to the woman, um, again, she's wearing sunglasses, so I can use that same blue. So let me take you back to the first painting. And if you remember, I said I was going to crop this painting to remove these kind of failed rocks here. So let me show you that finished image. And once I've removed that left hand edge, although I lost some of the lovely colour mixing in the sea, this, you know, it's created quite a nice sense of space, I think. The foreground figures are definitely you know, they definitely look a lot closer than the, you know, the, the mid-ground and the background figures. So that's painting one. So on to painting two. Now this one I felt was rather more successful as a whole. But if we look at the figures, um, you can see that although they're painted quite simply, I have kind of stayed within the confines of the original line work that I put down. So it's almost more of an illustrative approach. So that then brings us on to the final painting, which you've been looking at, you've been watching the live demo of. And you can see I've now added the sunglasses to the woman in you know, very simple shape in ultramarine blue. But if we look at these two figures, I've actually decided to leave this painting as it is. Now, the two figures don't have any feet, 
my original intention was, you know, I've moved these figures from further up the beach in the reference down to the water's edge. So my intention was to paint the water kind of, you know, coming in over their feet and, you know, they don't care about getting their trousers wet. But I've actually just decided to not even do that and just have the feet missing. I'm going to explain a bit more in a second. This woman's barely got any arms. She's barely got a head. This guy doesn't have a face and he doesn't really have any hands either. But from my point of view, you know, if I look in detail close up, there are lots of bits that are missing. But on the whole, when I pull back, these relatively refined impressionist figures next to the very loose abstract background, which is essentially just a single wash, I feel on the whole, it does read as two people walking along the beach. And so from that point of view, that's why I've decided to just stick with the absolute minimum I could do and leave it as kind of a, a visual statement. I'm not trying to go for full photorealism, obviously, but as a painting on the whole, I really like this. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you can see where I'm coming from. But let me know in the comments below whether you prefer painting one, two or three. I'd be interested to hear your opinions. Um, whatever they are, hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Thanks very much for watching.